What's up everybody, Bruno here again. I'm gonna take some time and answer a lot of the questions that I get. Um, again, I'm gonna do it in video form. So uh, let's just get to it. So the first question is, how did you prepare for the show? That's a good question. So um, the first time around, I auditioned for the show. Season three, I went to Toronto and I did a live audition. So I knew I was gonna be back on the show. I had time to prepare. I knew mentally and physically before I even went to audition that I was gonna be, you know, I was gonna be doing it and preparing myself to get on the show. Um, so I went to the gym. I watched a lot of seasons. I watched a lot of Big Brother, uh, the Canadian ones, the American ones, just to see different people's games and just to see how people act. Um, the way people connect, how to bond with people uh, in the house. Now, you don't get the full experience because it is an edited show, but you kind of get the idea. To see uh, how people are in the diary room compared to how they are in the house. Uh, just things like that. Uh, for season five, I didn't audition. So I didn't know I was going to be going back on the show until about a month before. So I was actually in probably the worst shape of my life. It was a month before season five starts, or until I got uh, sequestered, and I got the call. So uh, I was sitting there, just just not in shape, not in Big Brother mode at all, just you know pure dad mode. And uh, I was told, listen, uh, you know we want to get you back on the show, whatever. So I knew I had only a month to prepare. So I started going to the gym every day. I was swimming every day. I highly recommend that if you want to get into shape. Uh, do a lot of swimming, a lot of laps. So I dropped about 20 pounds in a month, got into you know com uh, competitive uh, shape or competing shape, uh, enough to just let me get by for competitions and all that stuff. I did watch more seasons of Big Brother, uh, just to kind of get back in the mode. I was actually at that moment, I was kind of out of the whole Big Brother thing. I barely watched season four. I didn't really watch the American one. So I was kind of just out of the whole Big Brother thing. And um, so I really had to just kind of jump right back in and get back into that kind of mindset again. So that's how I kind of prepared. I did uh, a lot of, uh, you know, uh, cardio. Cardio is key in the Big Brother house and just uh, maintaining relationships. So I wanted, like I said, I watched a lot of the episodes again just to see how people's personalities, who they could clash with, who they bond with, how to deal with them, uh, things like that. Who did you want to align with that you didn't? That's a good question. Um, actually, I would have to say William and Dre. Uh, you know, when I was in season three, I had that wall with Kevin. Uh, we just did not connect. We didn't click at all. It just we had this wall. So coming into season five, I said, you know what? I'm not going to let that wall come between me and anybody else in this house. But then I met Dre. Dre just would not break down that wall. I would try to talk to her and she just would not let me in. So uh, I would have to say Dre and William were the two. I wanted to get close with William because I knew Kevin was close to William and I was very close with Kevin. So I always wanted to kind of try to bring us all together. I knew uh, William was the glue between the four of us, but Dre just wouldn't buy it. Dre wanted nothing to do with me and I just couldn't break it down. She was just, she was too much, she was too in with Ica and I just could not break that down. So. Who I wanted to align with, I would say Dre and William, those are the people that I just could not, could not click with no matter what I tried to do. Question three, are you and Kevin still friends? Absolutely. Kevin is my boy. I love the guy. I was actually just playing uh, games them last night. We play video games together online. Uh, we talk all the time. We keep in touch. The guy is a gem. He is so great. Uh, nothing but great things to say about the guy. I can't believe on the first time we played, we just did not click or bond. I don't know, but uh, I'm, I'm so glad we got to do it again, do it right, and uh, I have nothing but mad love for the guy. Number four, would you do it again? Uh, yeah, I would love to play again. Uh, you know, it's one of those things. The first time I played, my kids were very young, and uh, when I went in the house, I actually, you know, it's actually kind of backwards. So the first time I went in the house, I because nobody's ever to tell you that your family's okay or everything's okay at home. So you start doubting yourself a little bit. You start getting a little bit of doubt in your head. And because there's nobody there to say, you know what, Bruno, everything's okay. Your family's fine. It kind of snowballs and it gets worse and worse. And you start doubting yourself more and more. And you just, you know, something's telling you, oh, something's wrong. Something's wrong. When really everything was okay. So the first time I played, I always had that kind of, you know, just on my mind all the time. Like something's wrong. Something's wrong. Um... 
So when the second time I went in, and but everything was fine. So the second time I went in, I was kind of like, you know what? Everything's okay at home. I know I could put that on the back burner. I'm okay. They're okay. Uh, everything's going to be okay. So I tried to put them in the back of my mind and focus more on the game. Well, when I came home, I found out, you know, the kids, it was a lot harder on them this time. Uh, they were a little bit older. They understood a little bit more. They missed me a lot more. Uh, things like that. So to do it a third time... If, if I were to get asked to play, I mean, the chances are very, very slim. But if the chances were there that they asked me to play again, um, I would definitely would like to do it. It would all depend on the kids and where they are in life. Um, if they're at a stage where uh, they'll be okay, I would love to. If they're at a stage where I think it would kind of damage them or hurt them, uh, no, I wouldn't do it. Uh, number five, what's the best strategy? You know, these are all good questions. By the way, these are fan questions. Uh, I didn't come up with any of these. Uh, I didn't write down who asked them, sorry about that, but uh, they are questions that I did get through Snapchat or Instagram or Twitter or whatever, Facebook, whatever it was. So uh, I do appreciate all these questions. There's some really good questions, so I'll get to that. So what's the best strategy? I'll tell you right now, there is no set strategy. You know, I, I played twice and I didn't win. So my strategies obviously don't work. Uh, that being said, you know, there's so many different types of winners over the years. There's been the strategic winner. There's been the competition beast winners. There's been the social winner. There's been the quiet girl winner. Uh, there's so many different ways. There's been the loudmouth winner. There is no set strategy. People can tell you this is what you have to do to win. Don't believe it. That's not the case. Every single year is different. Every single year has a whole new cast, whole new personalities. You can never predict or say how to play. It just doesn't happen. Uh, my personal strategy going into the house was to just basically see who was in the house with me and then adapt. Um, you can't go in saying, I'm going to go in week one and I'm going to do this. And then in week two, I'm going to do this. And then this and this and this. You can't do that. The game changes so fast. And I know it sounds kind of like one of those generic answers like, oh yeah, the game changes so fast, but it really, really does. The game can change just by one simple conversation or one simple argument or, you know, as simple as you're sitting on the couch beside somebody and, uh, you know, all of a sudden you hear something or you guys just connect over something. Whatever it is, the game changes so, so, so fast. You cannot talk about week two, three or four in week one. You cannot go in the house with this preset strategy. It just does not work. Um, now, you can have ideas of things you want to do while you're in there. That could be part of your strategy. Absolutely. But you can't go in and be like, oh, I'm going to... Uh, find this guy or this girl or whatever, and I'm going to make them do this and that. It doesn't work that way because their strategy could be the absolute counter to that or someone else's strategy could be the absolute counter to that. It just doesn't work. Um, so for me personally, my strategy was just to go in. Uh, everyone's on the same page. Uh, you cannot paint everyone with one brush. So I would have to talk to each person individually uh, differently than I would talk to the next. You know, the way I would try to find common ground with each person and just connect with them on that and they, you know, you build a friendship off of that. And uh, again, you know, you, the, way, the, the way I would talk to one person wouldn't be the same way I would talk to another person because I might not work with them. So you just got to kind of have to find that common ground and uh, connect that way. But as of the best strategy, I don't have the answer for that. Number six, do you regret playing with Cindy? Uh, you know, that's a good question. Here's the thing, okay? Uh, so on season three, Cindy and I wanted to work together, whatever, it didn't happen. After the show, we actually became very good friends. Cindy was a very, very, very good friend of mine after season three. Uh, I'd go down to Toronto every couple months, or she'd come to Ottawa, we'd always hang out. Things are great. Uh, she came to my son Dominic's baptism, along with Bobby and Neha, uh, Godfrey. So, uh... We're friends. Cindy and I were actual friends outside of this house. She is someone I can, that was very close to me. And I love her like a sister. Season 5 comes. Now, it's good to see Cindy in the house. This is someone I actually know outside of the house. This is a, a pre-existing relationship. I know Cindy's not going to come after me. And I'm not going to come after Cindy. It's great. That's one less person I have to worry about. And we instantly have trust for each other. It's great. You cannot ask for anything better than that. The problem with that is... Uh, our games just don't mesh. That's the problem is the way Cindy plays and the way that I play just don't work together. So by her being in the house actually ruins my game and hurts my game, even though it's someone that's not coming after me. I know it's kind of sounds weird. 
Uh, but for me, it's better when Cindy's out of the house because the moves that she makes, she's one of those kind of players she likes that big move for TV, horrible for her game and everyone else's game, but it's a memorable moment. The JP blindside, horrible move on her part, great for TV, it was great for my game. The, the whole Netta thing, horrible for her game, horrible for my game, horrible for everybody's game, uh, but great TV. Um, so again, I think um, playing with Cindy it didn't. Uh, it wasn't bad because I knew she wasn't coming after me. But just our games just do not mesh. The way she plays, the way I play, just doesn't work. It's a shame, but that's the way it is. <clears throat> Number seven. How did you put your trust in Kevin when the first time you were enemies? Great question. Uh, yeah, you know, Kevin and I had uh, the first time we played. We had a huge wall between us. Did, we did not like each other. We did not talk to each other. Even after the show was over, we didn't care for each other. Straight up. Uh, actually, here's a funny story. Here's a good story. And actually how we kind of connected a little bit. So Cindy was working in um, Ottawa one weekend. So she was going to come visit me and everything, blah, blah, blah. So uh, she was working in a mall or something, and uh, a fan of the show came up and, and, and recognized her and talked to her and said, hey, listen, I'm getting married tomorrow. Why don't you come to my wedding? Cindy says, sure, no problem. She says, I'm actually here to visit Bruno. And the girl says, hey, bring him too. That'd be great. You and Bruno both come. So um, I talked to Cindy about it. And I said, hey, you know what? Kevin at the time was living in Montreal. So I said, uh, you know, why don't we call Kevin and see if he wants to come? I never talked to this guy. We had no... Uh, relationship outside of this house I said you know for some reason I said you know what just give Kevin a call why don't we see if he wants to come it's an hour and a half drive it's nothing uh, we can all hang out Kevin comes Kevin says yeah no problem I'll come to this wedding so Kevin comes to the wedding uh, we get together we just start talking having a few drinks and you know we really connected we really Kevin and I just really got along we just liked each other and it was just it was great it was kind of weird because you know we couldn't stand each other for all this time that we were hanging out in this house but you know we spent a night having a good time at a wedding and we just really connected so we asked each other you know what happened man why why couldn't we just connect in season three what what happened man why couldn't we how did we let this happen and uh you know we're like what if we would have actually worked together how crazy would that have been like if we would have been together how far could we have gone or how different would the game have been if we actually worked together rather than against each other? So we kind of laughed about it and said, oh man, that's crazy, man. Imagine like, imagine if we would have worked together. Well now, um, and then, okay, so then, uh, you know, we talked a little bit, nothing, nothing pre-existing alliances, nothing like that whatsoever, but we kind of connected a little bit from that wedding. So we ended up starting playing little video games together. We played a couple of video games together, just talking, uh, you know, stuff like that. Now we fast forward to season five. Nobody knows I'm going in this house. I didn't tell anybody. People were asking me. My phone was blowing up. People asked me if I was going back. Nothing. I shut everybody down. My boy, Bobby. Bobby is like a brother to me. He was at my house the weekend before. He came to Ottawa to visit me the weekend before I went to sequester. And we were talking about All-Stars. And he's like, oh, man, there's no way. There's no way. And I played along. I knew I was going to sequester the following weekend. And I still told Bobby... Uh, no, you know, I'm not going. This is my boy. If there's one person I would have told, it would have been Bobby. And I didn't tell, I didn't even tell him. So nobody knew I was going back for season five. So I walk in that door and I see Kevin in the house and he looks at me. We literally night one looked at each other and it's like, yeah, let's do this. Let's right our wrongs. Let's do what we should have done the first time. So, uh, I was loyal 100% to Kevin from that moment on. And, uh, I'm really glad we got to play together the second time. And uh, just, it was absolutely great to, to see what we could have done. I mean, we really connected and stuff. I'm glad he won. He took it home. And uh, yeah, so that's how that all came about. So good on him. I still play video games with the guy. Great dude. Love him. Uh, what do you think of Netta's game? Oh, you guys have no idea. Netta is such a good player. This She is incredible. The way her mind works, the way she sees the game, the way she relays information... It was amazing. I'm so glad I got to I got the chance to play with her. And, uh, you know, I'll tell you something. There's a lot of people in the house. Sometimes people make, make the game more complicated than it is. It's such a basic game. The game is very, very easy. Uh, that might come across wrong when I say easy. But the information going around is it's very uh, obvious who's working with who, um, who's against you. 
it, to me, it was very obvious. You know, you just by the way or where people are hanging out in the house, uh, when people are in the pantry for 45 minutes talking, you know, they're not in there grabbing a banana. It doesn't take 45 minutes to grab a banana. They're obviously having a conversation in there. So uh, to me, it was just very easy to see who was working with who, where people were shifting. Um, and, and with Netta, it was just so great. When we get together, it would take two minutes. We'd relay all the information we needed to, to, to relay to each other. We were always on the same page. It was just, it was very easy to work with her. And uh, I just, I wish things worked out different. I loved working with her. It was just, she's so smart. The th she knew everything. I'm telling you, she knew how many drawers opened and closed in the house. Uh, every, how many squares there were on the wall. Like, I'm telling you, this girl, Netta, is amazing. Such a good player unbelievable um oh man my heart goes out to her she is so good so 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 good uh absolutely still one of the best for sure which season was harder season three or season five i'll tell you something uh season five was tough season three everyone kind of got along uh there's a lot of super fans so the game you know the problem with that is a lot of people knew not to open their mouths too much in season three so everyone kind of got along even pretending to get along and all that stuff um, season five, there wasn't as many super fans and I felt people were more, uh, open to argue and stuff like that. And, uh, but I found season five was a lot harder, definitely a lot harder. Um, the other thing too is in season three, nobody knew, and this, not just for me, and this goes for everybody else, you know, Kevin, Cindy, and, and all the returning players from season two and season one, season four, uh, nobody knew our games the first time we played. The second time we came back, it was a lot different, right? Uh, people kind of had our playbook in their hands. People knew what my diary rooms were like. People knew, um, you know, how I was with the house guests uh, in the house, uh, socially or whatever. And then when I'm in the diary room, uh, my intentions or things like that. So I felt the the, the second time around, your, your, your hands shone. And yes, of course, you know, you got to change your game up a little bit and this and that. But, you know, you're always going to go back to who you are and how you play and what your instincts are telling you. So you're just going to play the way you play. That's just, that's how you are socially or whatever. So when people get this idea that, you know, the first time I played up, they saw me some old guy. I was what, 32 when I played. I wasn't very old. I was very athletic. And, but they had this image of me, of this old guy. So I just play it up. Yeah, I'm the old guy. Don't worry about me. And they didn't see me as a threat. Uh, the second time, and, and on the first time they didn't see how I saw the game, you know, um, just whatever, how I see it or whatever is going on or, you know, am I willing to cut people or do whatever? They had no idea what I was about. They saw me as this nice guy. They called me Zio Bruno, which means uncle. Um, that's how they saw me. So then when I come back the second time for season five, I can't, that, that kind of smoke is gone. I don't have that smoke over me to see, to, for people to say, oh, he's just some nice guy or, oh, he's an old guy or he can't compete, you know? Uh, they knew I could compete. They knew how I saw the game strategically or socially or whatever. They know my diary rooms, how I talk in there, how I explain the game, etc., etc. So season five was a lot harder. I felt I came in with a target on my back right from the start. Dre herself told me when we were in jury that as soon as she saw me walk in that door, she wanted me out. I didn't even say a word to anybody and I had to go. I was already someone's enemy before I even said a word. So that kind of stuff kind of sucked. Um, so yeah, I definitely felt like my back was against the wall in season five, right from the start. <clears throat> uh, question 10, when you have a costume for HOH, veto or punishment, do you get changed in diary room? That's a good question. So there's a couple answers to that. Uh, when you have a costume for HOH, yes, you do get dressed in the diary room. Um, so what happens is, okay, so veto or punishment. Okay. So when you have competitions, uh, sorry, for HOH, no. For Vito and HOH competitions, you get uh, locked in one of the bedrooms. So they take all the wardrobe, they put them on these racks, and they put them in the HOH, in, um, in, sorry, one of the bedrooms, the blue or red room, whatever it is. Usually the blue room. And they lock everybody else in the HOH room. Only the people competing go in the blue room. So uh, we get dressed in there. All our wardrobes are there. Everyone's getting dressed in there. And uh, whoever's hosting the competition gets dressed in the uh, diary room. So we actually don't see the host until they come out. It's kind of like a little surprise. We all cheer. We get happy. Uh, all that stuff. But yeah, the competitors all get changed in the blue room. Uh, it's like a, there's usually a sheet showing us what we should look like. Um, they kind of explain things to us. If there's like hair bands or whatever, how we got to wear them. Uh, they give us a few minutes, but it's kind of like hurry up and get dressed. Uh, then we go out in the backyard. Then we wait, and then the host will come out dressed as whatever. 
but yeah, for HOH and Vito, we do get dressed in the blue rooms. Punishments, we do get dressed in the, in the diary room. So usually they get called in the diary room. Everyone kind of knows it's coming because we know there's a punishment coming for whoever. So once we hear the whoever, Bruno, whoever, come to the diary room, we know it's time and everyone kind of gives a little cheer and they know what's going to happen. So you usually go in the diary room, you get dressed, you do your, your DR session, and then you come out and we all have a good laugh. Uh, question 11, do you get to pick your clothes coming into the house? Good question. Uh, no, we don't. We bring our own clothes, but uh, while we're in sequester, there is a wardrobe team. So if they don't like some of the things you brought or maybe they have an idea for you, um, they show you. So what happens is uh, the day before you go into the show, they come in, wardrobe comes in, they give you your outfit and they say, this is what you're wearing tomorrow. So you don't actually pick it. They pick your outfit for you. The first time on season three, I went in in a full suit. I never, ever would have picked that to go into the house. I didn't want that image uh, of wearing a full suit going into the house. They picked it for me. The second time, it was definitely more casual. It was like a red shirt and jeans or something. Very more, very, uh, very different. And I actually preferred that. I liked that I was, or maybe it was a blue shirt. I don't remember. I think it was a blue shirt. And I'm colorblind too, man. So uh, I think it was a blue shirt or a red shirt. I don't remember. Whatever it was. But um, very casual the second time. But they do pick. Absolutely. Uh, number 12, the hardest part of the game. That's a good question. The hardest part of the game, you know, um, yeah, there's a lot of downtime in the house. I, I think people don't understand that. You know, they see three hours a week and, um, it's very, you know, action packed. They're going to show you the, the key parts of what's going on, but there's a ton, a ton, a ton of downtime. There's a lot of times you're sitting on a couch for five hours, not saying a word to anybody. Uh, and it happens a lot every single day. Sometimes you're just laying around, sometimes you're talking, sometimes you're not. By the second, third, fourth week, you know, you've kind of heard everyone's story. Um, you're starting to talk about like your cats or your uncle's, whatever, cousin's, once cousin removes cat. Like you're just, it's stories that you just don't care about anymore. So there's a lot of silence. Um, yeah, the hardest part of the game is probably just the downtime. Missing the family is obviously huge. That's a big one. Um, yeah, stuff like that. But you know, like, uh, like I was saying earlier, uh, knowing where people stand, it's kind of, to me, it was very clear both times, both times it was very obvious who was working with who, um, people kind of usually have it written all over their face or just who they're hanging out with, who they spend their time with. It's very, very, uh, to me, very easy to figure it out. Um, uh, not saying that, you know, other people couldn't do it. It's just, I think it's the common um, I think everyone kind of realizes it's a lot easier in the house than people think of who's working with who. But the one thing that's easier sitting at home is you do see everyone's point of view. You do see everyone's DRs. So uh, you only hear what you hear in the house and you only see what you see in the house. And I'd say 80% of the time, it's bullshit. It's a lie. So you're, you're, you have to filter what's real and not. Where at home, you have that filter for you. They're telling you their true intentions. When in the house, you have to decide for that for yourself. So I guess the hardest part of the game, yeah, there's a few little hard parts, but... And not to sound like that, but in all in all, it's it's a pretty basic game. It's just, it's made harder than it seems. Um, 13, what are your thoughts on Dylan and Emily getting mad at you and Kevin for not using the veto and turning on you guys? Uh, yeah, that was hard, you know, because I did, I really liked Dylan and Emily. Actually, we had an alliance that never made the show. We were called Beauty and the Beasts. Uh, Emily was the beauty, me and Dylan were the beasts. And uh, you know what? I thought we were pretty tight and it never even aired. So that was kind of weird to me because uh, we had a good little thing going. Uh, but the thing about them getting mad about us not using the video, listen, they just wanted to play together. Um, they were each other's ride or dies. They were upset that one of them was going to go home. Now, they were told that Jackie would have been the replacement if Kevin used the veto. They believed it. You can't blame them. They believed it. Uh, meanwhile, I knew it would have been me. Uh, I was told it would have been me. I believe Ica told me. But I also knew that Dre and William were coming after me since day one. It was no secret. Um, everybody knew that. So I knew I would have been the replacement. They wanted Kevin to use the veto so I could go up. How bad would it have looked on Kevin if he uses the veto? His, his number one goes up. Wouldn't have looked good. Um, but they couldn't see past that. That's the problem is they, they were so focused on just, they wanted each other safe in the house. They didn't care who went out. They openly said it in front of Jackie. Like, you know what? You were going to go up. Why can't, uh, use the veto. Jackie's going to go up and Jackie's going to go home. And we were supposed to be all working together. So Jackie was kind of like, what the hell, man? Like why, you know, and that's the thing is, is why is their game more important than Jackie's when they were willing to cut anybody for each other, which is, you know, rightfully so. But uh, there was no way we were going to use the veto because I was going on the block. They couldn't see that they actually thought it was going to be Jackie. 
can't blame them for getting mad. It was frustrating trying to trying to tell them and and make them see the the truth. And I even told them, I said, guys, it's me. And they would not believe it. No matter how much I told them that it was me, they were like, no. They said it was Jackie. It's gonna be Jackie. So that kind of sucked because uh, I really like Dylan and Emily. I still, I mean, we're great friends out of the house, absolutely. But in the house, that was a huge dagger in my game because they both turned on me right there, and it was. It was not, there was nothing I could do about it. Trying to, trying to even let them know that, listen, guys, it's me on the block that would go up on the block. They just did not believe it, and they turned on me. That kind of sucked. But, hey, it's the way it goes. It's Big Brother. Like I said, you see what you see. You hear what you hear. You're going to believe what you believe, and you can't blame them for it. That's just the way it goes. Uh, 14, who are you scared of the most? Ah, here you go. Okay, so actually, uh, for me, I would say the one, when I walked in and I saw, and I saw Netta, I was like, this can either go really good or really bad. Either we're going to get along really, really, really well, or we're going to be going head to head the entire season. So when I saw Netta at first, I was like, oh man, like uh, I don't know how this is going to go, but I'm just glad we clicked. I mean, we really got along. It was great, but she was the one I was like, yeah, if anything, she either has to go or we got to be best friends. It's one or the other. There's going to be no in between. So uh, I was definitely, Netta was the one uh, when I walked in for sure. And the last question, number 15. Why does Dimitri get this comp beast credit while Kevin doesn't and they won the same amount of comps? That's a great, great, great question. Um, I don't have the answer for that, but the way I see it, my opinion on it is, okay, so Dimitri won a lot of HOHs. So when you win HOH, the week is, is mostly about you, right? It's your decision on who goes on the block. If someone uses the veto, it's your decision on who gets replaced. So I think he gets more airtime, and plus the whole Ike Dimitri uh, um, uh, showman's thing was getting a lot of airtime too. So I think because um, he was HOH pretty much every couple weeks, even though Kevin won as many comps, the the week wasn't about Kevin. You know, the week was about Dimitri and his picks, his nominations, who he wants on the block, who his targets are. So it was more focused on him and there's a lot more focus on him every week. So I think that's why he gets more credit uh, for it. Uh, again, that's just my opinion. I don't know the real answer, but uh, that's the way I see it because there's more airtime on him simply he's he, because he's HOH. And when, you know, when Kevin wins a veto, uh, he wins the veto, he does the ceremony, that's it. Where Dimitri, it's his talk all week of who he wants on the block, his nominations, uh, who his replacement is, yada, yada, et cetera, et cetera. So I think that's why he just gets more airtime about it. And uh, that's why it comes across as, a, as he had uh, more wins and all that stuff. So that's the 15 questions uh, that I chose out of the, or that were chosen for me out of the, uh, all the questions. Thank you guys so much. They were great, great, great questions. Uh, I hope you enjoyed it. I hope you learned something from it. And, uh, you know, I might do another one of these soon. And, uh, you know, it's just great talking to you guys. Uh, there's so much love and support out there. You guys have been amazing. Uh, you know, I really thank you guys for everything. And, uh, you know, don't be shy to hit me up anytime. Uh, I'm always open to talk. Uh, I answer questions all the time, just in DMs or whatever. And, uh, yeah, so just hit me up anytime if you want to just chat have any questions, whatever it is. Uh, also, you know, hit that sub button, that like button. And uh, hey, let's keep this going. I'll, I'll make some more videos soon. And uh, yeah, so you have a good time, guys. Uh, BB Can 6 is a go. Can't wait. I'll be watching. And uh, hopefully some of you watching this uh, will be playing this year. So I'll be cheering you on and good luck.